Welcome to PhotoFinds. I'm your host, Kevin Yee, and this week we have a lot to catch up on. I've been out of town, so we're going to cover some things that are uh, a few weeks old in some cases, but there's a lot of ground to cover. First up on the Magic Kingdom, the scrims have come down. There has been uh, construction going on or refurbishment going on on these walls pretty much for months on end, so it's refreshing to see Main Street with no walls in place. However, it's also missing a few trees. You can see the spots where the trees used to be on one side of the uh, sidewalk, over on this side only. The other side still has its trees there in that location. Over by uh, Winnie the Pooh, the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, this section, which was formerly um, Tigger's Bounce Pad, the walls have come down, and as you see now, it is a meet and greet for uh, Winnie the Pooh characters. So they've re completely done away with that uh, the concept of bounce pads where people can jump on the bounce pads and just turn it into a meet and greet uh, that's only operating from certain times of the day. Now the Winnie the Pooh Fast Passes, as you might know, are in front of Mickey's Philhar Magic, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's where they are. And uh, in the meantime, they've also added Dumbo Fast Passes over here, so half are dedicated to each of those two rides. So it can get a little confusing because Dumbo, uh, having opened its second one, now has Fast Pass as well. More on that in a second. First, the Casey Jr. Um, Soakin' Splash Zone uh, is more fun than perhaps you're imagining, and uh, this being photo finds, I have to point out the little details when I find them. These numbers on the back of the cars correspond to the opening years of several of the parks. 71 for the Magic Kingdom, 82 for Epcot, uh, 98 for uh, Disney's uh, Animal Kingdom, uh, there's 71 again, and 89 elsewhere for um, MGM Studios. Uh, now, there is a bit of a fence up here. You're not meant to go inside um, the Casey Jr., although it does kind of look, if you go around the side and look into it, it looks like there are wheels to turn and so forth as if it were designed for people to be able to do that. Now, the merchandise cart nearby has the number 7, and if we go back on one slide to look at uh, the Casey Jr. train, it has the number 9, so you have 7 and 9 right here. Uh, the only real explanation we can come up with for this is not an official one, it's just a guess. Those are the numbers of the trains at Disneyland on the Casey Jr., um, which is an attraction at Disneyland. So um, my guess is this is a bit of an homage to the Disneyland trains. Now the double Dumbo is open. There's a Dumbo on the left, that's the older one. The Dumbo on the right, ostensibly the new one, transplanted from elsewhere, although it looks like it's been rebuilt to me. There are some problems with the Dumbo um, that was um, built first here in this location, the now older one. As you can see, there are scrapes on many of the kind of kneecaps of the Dumbos. They're just scraping on the bottom, uh, and hopefully they will fix that, and it doesn't spread to the second Dumbo. Now we're going to have a look inside the um, interactive queue. We go in one of the doors and down a quick hallway. As you see, it's themed like a circus tent, and you get past some circus banners that explain the, the, the pager concept to you. And there indeed is your restaurant-style pager that will buzz when your standby time is over. If you have a fast pass ticket, you don't use this system. You don't need it. Now, it's a playground for um, two, two areas. Um, one is for toddlers, ages 2 to 3, and the other is for older kids. There's a Dumbo flying around overhead. And there's some nice details in the toddler zone. You'll see another picture of the toddler zone in a moment. Uh, it's themed like a, like a circus or a clown area. You've got human cannonballs, etc. That's a slide right there. And here's another slide over on the side, as well as um, having some familiar details like you remember from the old uh, Dumbo queue there with this kind of, you know, design your own character spin around thing. Uh, and it, it really is also um, just a a climbing and nets area much like you would see in mission space you see some uh, obstacles back there and things that you can climb on here that are these that are themed like trampolines in fact they light up when you touch them there's that toddler zone not too much to do here but um, perhaps just enough for little kids and I do like the theming of the slides the human cannonball here also the lights that show up when you slide down it now being on the double dumbo um, adds a little bit of excitement because they spin in opposite directions so in some ways they're dueling dumbos like as you're coming towards them they're coming towards you as well uh, and that can be interesting uh, in and of itself in terms of dynamics I thought this was interesting that on one of my visits to Epcot over the past week uh, they had two lines one for everyday visitors and one for um, the Brazilian tour groups were only sent over to this side of the line uh, it's as though the um, the cast knew that the Brazilian tour groups were coming that day and they all were working with coupons, so this must be something pre-planned. Now, I've known about this particular uh, trash can for some time, an electric umbrella, uh, also near Interventions. Uh, it talks when you push in this, um, this uh, flap right here and deposit anything, and I've never really thought about it, but of course it has to be plugged in, so I took a photo of the plug. 
We're here at Innoventions just to show that um, the Kim Possible uh, infrastructure here is being removed. You can see it's being ripped out of the walls, in some cases uh, leaving a little bit of damage behind. That's because the uh, replacement for it, the Agent P experience, uh, doesn't need the Innoventions areas. You do everything without the Innoventions issue zone. So they've got new topiaries up for Phineas and Ferb celebrating the um, Agent P World Showcase Adventure. Here's the uh, World Showcase Plaza um, area. And they're not using that back structure at all. They've just got a cart out front. It's got a, kind of a, a radar theme at the front here. And here you can see the uh, logo for the entire Agent P thing. They've changed over the World Showcase designs as well. What you get issued is um, the same kind of thing. It's a cell phone. This is a bit of a sticker with Agent P in the front here. And uh, all of the programming has been done brand new. It's got um, brand new animations, new stories, and the seemingly authentic sounding uh, voices. I'm sure they probably were authentic from the actual Disney actors. And then they've changed out the signs throughout World Showcase, but the carts themselves haven't had any changes to them. Just the signs, as you can see, have taken on the Agent P persona, but if you look closer at the carts around World Showcase, they don't have much there. Now the costumes have changed, and let's explore this just a little bit. Um, these are medals, as if, as if our workers are all in the military, and uh, they are. Um, uh, this is a mustache for Major Monogram. This is Phineas's triangle head. These are the colors for Ferb and the colors for Candace. That's what they are meant to represent. Now the game mostly takes place on the cell phones. A few, most of the physical effects have been left unchanged. They've just been given, given a different context. But a couple of the effects are different, uh, the physical effects. And here's uh, Agent P rising out of a flower box in Germany. And just right next door, the culmination of the Germany um, storyline has Doofenshmirtz being attacked by a Glockenspiel character. Now, I happened to be at Epcot for the 4th of July, so I dropped by the American Adventure to see what was new, and this, um, this Swaying in the Breeze exhibit seemed new to me, as well as the Uncle Sam Vinylmation figures for sale for $17, and the $30 Duffy dressed as Uncle Sam figures. Now, the costumes will be changing soon at the American Adventure, something a little bit more like a blue... Uh, frankly, a, f a flight attendant costume like you might see in an airline is what they're changing to. I thought I would show you the current costume looks like uh, before they're all gone. Just around the corner in the fast food at the American Adventure, I haven't seen this grilled chicken flatbread before, so it's uh, new to me at least. Not sure how new it is in general. Same thing with the black bean vegetarian burrito. Certainly the other pieces have been around before. Now around the corner from there, you'll see a sign for it in a moment. There are two different kinds of waffles, um, not waffles, uh, funnel cakes now for sale. This is the new one, and it is a strawberry funnel cake. It's not strawberries on top. The whole thing is made with um, kind of a strawberry uh, a flavor from the beginning, and it costs an extra dollar. As you see, it's $7 for the strawberry cake. Down uh, one pavilion over to the, Jap uh, to the Japan pavilion, you'll see in the... Um, Kamabuki Cafe that there are new offerings here. The bento box for uh, $11 and the um, a few different kinds of sushi has been added to uh, to the environment here and they'll show you some examples right away in the window and here's the bento box for $11. A concept very common in Japan, not so common here in the, in the States. There was a crane a few weeks ago in the France Pavilion, behind the France Pavilion. They were building a two-story structure that will be the new bakery. They are closing the current bakery eventually. This is inside the shop, as you see behind the bakery, and this, uh, this doorway here that's been built into the wall will be the entrance into the new bakery when it's open. The cast members local, uh, local to the area said that it would be October before that occurred. Now they've changed out the decor of the bedroom area here for the Winnie the Pooh meet and greet in the United Kingdom pavilion. It looks a little bit more like Christopher Robin's bedroom. I thought this was interesting. They're doing more and more of these uh, flash mobs throughout the parks. Uh, we've seen them before, uh, which really only attracts the cast members, paid to be there, obviously, um, in Frontierland. But here's a YMCA one uh, done in the middle of Future World and got quite a few participants, in this case, many Brazilian uh, tour groups. Right in the same area, these tables are brand new for pin trading, although, as you see increasingly, people are using the tables for vinylmation trading as well. As I said, we were here for the 4th of July, so I thought I would share just a couple of photos of the, the massive fireworks explo explosions that occur at the end of the 4th of July celebration. Uh, it really is a show that is difficult to beat. Now, on all, all nights in the summer, not just on the 4th of July, there's something new going on here. As you see, everything is closed, 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 closed because it's after 9 p.m. The park is closed, 
but Soren is still open and has a 20 minute wait on the day I was taking this picture. That's because Test Track is closed, so they're keeping Soren open an additional hour. It's a EMH really for everyone, not just for hotel guests, for that extra hour uh, after the park closes. And it seems to be uh, not that well known by most of the visitors. Now the balloon uh, operated by Aerofile at Downtown Disney has closed characters in flight because an accident at the um, Aerofile uh, balloon in Hong Kong, not at Hong Kong Disneyland, but an ocean park in Hong Kong, um, has caused them to close worldwide operations and they are replacing the balloon at Downtown Disney. So characters in flight is simply not in operation at the moment. They haven't really given a timetable for when the new balloon will be will arrive. Uh, but since the old balloon um, had an accident in Hong Kong, again, not here, by bursting open, that's a problem they want to make sure they fix. While I was at Downtown Disney, I thought I would grab a photo of the former 8 Tracks location, now painted a rather neutral beige, and of the Rainforest Cafe undergoing construction across the lagoon. Its volcano looks like it's being rebuilt from the ground up. This is at the Lego store. The Dumbo, or the, um, the Dopey here, kind of struck me as looking a little bit like Sloth from the Goonies movie, if you remember that movie. Now, uh, Circus Afro is this uh, concept from the Madagascar movies, which has made its way to mouse ears for some reason. Uh, also in World of Disney, uh, these are upgraded um, tuxedo and uh, wedding gown mouse ears. I thought they were rather classy looking, so I thought I would snap a photo. And you'll see some additional Duffies for sale, both here and at uh, Epcot at the Duffy store uh, that really try to play to the Brazilian tourist groups. One couple last photos here from downtown Disney. The bowling alley looks nowhere near complete. Um, there's still ripped out ceilings and so forth. I uh, have a hard time believing that'll be open in, um, in this fall. And in fact, I don't think that the signs out front any longer say that it is opening in the fall of 2012. We've received word that Beastly Bazaar, uh, this is a shop in Discovery Island in Animal Kingdom, will soon be uh, removed and the space will become the character uh, meet and greet area now occupied by Camp Mini Mickey. Uh, what that implies is the Camp Mini Mickey area will be cleared away for Avatar construction. Now they haven't said that part, uh, but that's um, an inference that some people are making online. While we're here at DAC, let's have a look at a couple of these carts between Africa and Asia. This is one on the um, uh, sort of the tree side and it's got boneless chicken wings if you haven't seen this menu in a while that's probably a little different and then just across the way from that is the other cart uh, this is on the bird show side and it has edamame and noodle salad as well as lychee salad something brand new they've had ongoing construction at the safari where the um, last storyline about poachers has been removed they've been putting up fences as you see here and adding grasses uh, this is all in anticipation of the zebra exhibit coming here now and uh, we no longer follow exactly the same track. Uh, this zone here is where we were originally going through the, uh, the, water, the water spouts, not the waterfalls, um, while the poachers were shooting at us, quote unquote, and so it was a high speed area. That's all been removed now. Um, it's a very narrow uh, avenue here for the truck drivers to pass through. So they're going quite slowly and they're just being upfront about the fact that we're adding new exhibits here with the zebras. And this is the former home of the, uh, the airplane. The campsite, poacher's campsite, is gone as well. You'll see a couple of hints of the construction as well from uh, a few places like the backside of this animal uh, walk. Those are the meerkats in the front there, and as well as other little bits of construction happening to the trees throughout. Doesn't look like a real baobab tree now, does it? This is another park where you're seeing increased dance parties. There's, um, this is something that started in June, has continued through July. They've got street parties in, uh, in Africa as well as in Asia. And you see some hired dancer here as well as uh, the DJ also dressed up kind of in period garb to match the area. Um, as well as they've got special drinks for sale. As you see, they've got um, bar and some uh, limited specialty drinks available. This is one of the better uh, custodial built um, Mickeys. They just paint this with water using um, their custodial brooms. Uh, they've been doing this for some time in some areas, but it struck me as one of the better ones. And I'm not entirely sure, but I think this pole here is a little bit new. Um, this is, of course, is that famous spot where the these clay um, prayer altars line up with the mountains behind it if you stand in the right spot. Over in Dinosaur, in the Dino Land area, this is the shop, and this caught my eye as being a somewhat new machine for um, pressed pennies. Nothing all that extreme over here, but over on the other side of the pressed pennies, uh, this appears to be the Iguanodon from the original Discovery um, River boats. 
that was uh, available and, and uh, an animatronic that you saw out front uh, and now has been replaced by the Aladar one that you see out front of the dinosaur ride. Over the Tree of Life, the walkways are still barricaded and the um, netting is still up because of that accident some uh, months ago where uh, a branch fell. They have made the, the uh, nettings go all the way around the tree. That wasn't true before. Uh, and the area is still closed behind the tree for the, uh, for the kids' experience, the kids' discovery club. As you can see, it blocks the view of the tree um, somewhat completely. And now here we are back around the front side of the entrance to It's Tough to Be a Bug. Where this caught my eye, I never really uh, worked my way to the very back of that pre-show area, where you can see that um, the Orlando Sentinel has been lampooned a little bit on this one poster. Uh, the Wilderness Explorers meet and greet has moved to the former Fast Pass area in front of It's Tough to Be a Bug. Uh, we don't see the characters there at this moment. And then on our way out, uh, the Rainforest Cafe sometimes puts this A-frame sign out after the park closes to remind people they can go get dinner there. And it says, now accepting the Disney Dining Pass uh, plans. I'm not sure how uh, new that is, but that seemed new to my eyes. That brings us to the end of another update. Thank you so much for your patience, and I'm sorry we went through it a little fast. We'll try to go a little slower the next time, and we will catch you then.